to report from my vantage point. I, I really need to leave. So the things has informed me that the surrounding areas are, are in ruin. I, I see some people running now. And the opinion of this reporter, if this nation, or in fact the world, ever needed heroes, that time is now. That time is now. Broadcasting live from Epic Puzzles and Games in West Valley City, Utah. The Emperor has been expecting you. Surrounded by games, dice, cards, miniatures, puzzles, and more. Are you out of your fucking mind? Where geek is chic and pandemonium reigns supreme. Oh, yeah! Your host, Revan, a guy named Joe, and the great and mighty powerful Plagoon. I can tell what all this trouble is about, but I'm sure it must be your fault. Who reveal the many things about the world of geek. At the end of this day, one shall stand, one shall fall. Grab your staff, throw on your cape, tighten up your utility belt, grab that 20-sided die. You're not making any sense, man. Excuse me, I'm making perfect sense. You're just not keeping up. Because it's time for Dungeon Crawler's Ring. All right, welcome back. Hi, everybody. To another exciting show. Yeah. Uh, no, a guy named Joe. No, no Joe. No, he's sitting down in Arizona. Yeah, basking in, this, basking in the sun. This snow and cold. Enjoying the warmth. Yes. However, it was his birthday. Oh, happy birthday, yeah. Joe. I'm glad that he informed us as he left. <laughs> By the way, it's my birthday. So, anyways, yes, everyone... Wish Joe a happy birthday. Get on our Facebook page and just blast the heck out of it and say happy birthday to Joe. And I don't think he ever even looks at us. He does, actually. He does? He makes posts. Wow. Amazing I've... enough. And you have the power to do this, that I, as well. I do. Yes. Ooh. And you don't. I, I have power. You do. You, okay. You've been upgraded. I'll have to use it. Nice. Nice. So uh, we got a couple things. Uh, first off, what I want to announce kind of uh, as a good uh, faith thing uh about two years ago, we had a, a cast and crew come in for a movie called Unicorn City. Yeah. And, you know, it was a little independent thing that they filmed here uh, in Utah. It's pretty much a geek show. So it's about role players uh -huh. that up the ante and become LARPers. Oh, boy. And all the, the shenanigans that happen with that. Well, the great thing is, is this movie actually goes out into theaters February 24th. Really? But if you want to see it before then, there's some sneak previews coming. And if you go to our web page or even to our Facebook page, there's links on there to get passes to these free previews. Wow. So uh, the 16th, just a couple days away, they're going to be showing it at the uh, Century Theaters at 33rd South, 3300 South in state. Uh -huh. So you can go on our webpage and fill out and get a pass for that. Or they're doing a premiere event on the 23rd, so the night before at the Jordan Commons. Really? Now, the nice thing is, is they're going to be here next week, and we're probably going to be giving away some tickets. Oh. To yeah. So they'll, bring in the, they'll be bringing their cast in, and we'll be uh, having some fun. But, oh, my gosh. Yeah. I laughed the entire cool. movie. It was just crazy. Really? Yeah. You know, they're, they're doing their role-playing thing, and they get to this point, and the guy just gets so upset. And he, he's, like, sharpening his... The, like live real sword while, while they're playing <laughs> and he just gets frustrated with his DM because his DM is just like making stuff up and making it impossible and he slams the sword through the table and then yeah so there's just many many uh, funny hijinks like that well it's kind of cool that, there, that there's, a, there's a movie actually coming out I've seen so many web videos of basically people doing the exact same thing mm -hmm. and they just suck well, the funny thing is, is when they get to this point where they're LARPing, yeah. you know, they have to dress as their character. Yeah. One guy shows up as a centaur. He's, he, he's got the rear end. Okay. And, and it, it's got oscillating legs that are hooked up to wheels, so as he's walking, <laughs> the wheels are going up and down. And then, you know, there's this one part where he's like, he's like hungry, so he reaches behind and opens up his behind, and it's a cooler oh, full sweet. of food. How awesome is that? That is freaking awesome. Yeah. It, Please tell me nobody nobody decided I'm gonna play I'm gonna play a uh, uh, one of those one eyed things. No, a Cyclops. Oh, Cyclops. No, no, there's none of that. Play the no, you had an okay, elf. Good. You had a 
Uh, that would that would a, just be kind of a temptress that decided she was a succubus. Okay. Um, and uh, let's see, there was. I mean, there was this really cool scene where when they first started doing the LARP thing, where you know they're fighting this blob type creature, which is pretty much a tarp sitting on top of a car, and a guy's <laughs> inside of it, and, and he's firing a nerf gun at these guys, and so they're fighting it, and you know, and then he's like. No, do the magic missile, and he, 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 the guy inside puts out the, this thing of fishing twine, and they unroll it and zips it across next to the wizard. And there's a bottle rocket on there, and so he, he starts lighting. He goes, I cast magic missile. He's like, wait, not yet, not yet. So he lights it, and he's like, I cast magic missile, and then the firecracker flies off down this, and then hits the guy, and then the guy falls over like he just got killed. It was funny. That sounds yeah. awesome. So. Uh, I'm not going to say much more than that because otherwise we're going to give away the rest of the movie. Go but, uh, see it. This you must. Like yeah, you a, have to go see it. This sounds like a trip. Yeah. As it's been put, it's kind of a cross between Monty Python's Search for the Holy Grail okay. and Napoleon Dynamite. Nice. Yeah. So uh, it's kind of a good blend. Sweet. So, uh, All right. Okay. So what we're going to do, we do have some listener email. Um, we're going to go over that real quick right now. Okay. And then we'll jump into our interview. All right. All right. Oh, by so, the way, I'm the great mining power, powerful Plagoon. Oh, yes. We didn't say our names. No, we, you we didn't. Never, we've kind of gotten out of the habit of saying that. Yeah, you have. So I'm Revan. Yeah, hi, Revan. We all know that a guy named Joe's not here, so yeah, we, I guess they just that assumed season. that we were who we were. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know what happens when you assume things. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a donkey. Sometimes all right. I think I am. <laughs> so, Craven, uh, this hi, is an email from last week. Pretty much, he's having trouble coming up with a game session that involves the undead, and he wants to kind of make it fun, but not just constantly throw out skeletons and zombies. So we may talk about that on the forge. Tim the Enchanter wrote back. He's wanting to know the best way to run, a, I guess, an adventure in a stronghold of frost giants. Okay. Yes. Annis wrote back. He was the guy that we talked about, that we did the Gamer Forge last week about. Yes. Uh, he just wanted to say thank you to us for taking the time and throwing his question up as part of last week's Gamer Forge. And basically, he's saying that he is completely freaking out because we got Tracy Hickman to answer his question. <laughs> As he puts it, he, we got Tracy freaking Hickman to answer his question, which I, is just freaking amazing. I, I think that I think that's actually how you have to announce him now. Yeah, it's, it's not just Tracy Hickman now. It's Tracy freaking Tracy Hickman. freaking yeah. Hickman. And yeah, and he just says he never imagined his wildest dream he'd ever get the game his gaming advice from the man who created the world of Dragonlance. So. And we've made his year. Wow! And it's already it's only it's only February. I know it's only February. But hey, I'm thank you're you're welcome and thank you yeah. and uh, keep the emails coming. These are these are really fun. Uh, Ruben, the sleight of hand, wrote in. Uh, he's recently started running a game of his own. Uh, he's been playing for years, uh, and it, he says it's been fun creating the adventures and running the game in whole. However, his question, so we may hit on this on the Gamer Forge, is. How do you get your gamers to stop rule mongering and realize that D and D or role playing in general is not the same as playing D and D, a D and D game on the computer or World of Warcraft? And it's driving them nuts. So another, it kind of kind of sounds like another meta gaming uh, yeah. question. Yep. Which yeah, it, it, that is that is a, a very slippery slope. But we'll get into that. Uh, yep. All right. So now what we're gonna do? Yes. We don't really have anything else. I don't have any news. Um, Gaming news? Do you? Uh, biggest thing I've seen gaming-wise is uh, Tim Schafer, the uh, producer, the head producer of uh, uh, Double Fine. He did a, a, a big charity thing to try to get some money to uh, build a game, and it blew up nice. bigger than anyone was expecting. Okay. So yeah, congratulations. I hope we see Psychonauts two. <laughs> or, right. uh, or Or another uh, great game. And Max Payne three has been delayed. Oh. I know. Oh well. Okay, so we'll move okay. forward. All right, we're ten minutes in. I know this is the world is revolving quickly. Th- it is, and Joe is sitting in Arizona, as we've already sp- stated. I'm still jealous. <laughs> I want to go to Disneyland though. If I can go to Disneyland, who cares about Arizona? Yeah, true. There yeah. really isn't much in Arizona except for sand and cactus, lizards. Okay, lizards. Indians. Warm weather. Warm and weather. Warm weather. Very warm weather. All right. So we're sitting here with Taryn James. I'm pronouncing it correctly. Yes. Awesome. Uh, 
your book is Insight, which is the first of the Beholder series. Correct. So how many books are eventually going to be in this series? There will be four books. We'll okay. All said and done. And then after I'm, I've gone through and created the four books, there will actually be a prequel about the fall of the first stage of Apernesia and what led up to the first book. Apernesia, okay. Yeah. I did pronounce it right in my head. I, okay. I don't really have problems with that. <laughs> I you didn't even try to pronounce it in my remember, head at all. I, remember, I just saw that somewhere. Remember, remember jo- <laughs> Joseph, I still can't even try to pronounce his name. <laughs> yes. Nassis? Nassis. Yeah, there we go. I was saying it wrong for weeks. All right, so well, before we kind of go into the book, tell us a little bit about yourself. That's a Ooh. loaded question. It is. It's a hugely <laughs> loaded question. Oh, That's where the best start? start. Well, I live in Twila now with my wife and four boys. Nice. Uh, okay. okay. Good. Uh, my oldest is turning seven in two days. Yay! And then the next one That's will how turn. Old my son is. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah I have a seven-year-old. Seven. Yep. <laughs> But there, oh, someone jump in the chat? I heard a beep. No, that's that's Facebook. Oh. <laughs> Facebooking and radio shows. Yes. <laughs> Social media. It's wonderful. But yeah, anyway, so Dallin, that is my oldest son. Nice. Seven years old this Wednesday. And then our next son will turn five on Sunday, four days apart from each other. Wow. <laughs> Makes for interesting parties. Oh, I understand. <laughs> My uh, my actually uh, my girl's uh, tenth month birthday is actually on Wednesday. Oh. Ten month yeah. birthday. We're we're still she's still she's still young enough that uh, each month is a milestone. So <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I don't know. yeah, we we celebrated by buying her a thirty pound moose uh, stuffed moose at Costco. Uh, I saw those. Those yeah, they're uh, cool. No. You say thirty pounds, that started making my me daughter, think. my youngest one, saw that and started crying. Oh, oh. yeah. Oh well. <laughs> But, uh, my girl got just a I'm, big smile on her face, and she wouldn't let go of it. How did she... L- Never mind. <laughs> a 30-pound moose, and she had a good grip on that? She had a, a lot of pictures it. of those floating around yeah. Facebook. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> okay, I don't have to worry back. about moose. <laughs> moose, many much moose in, in the words yeah. of Brian Regan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in my house, we're more interested in swords and death things with oh. toys. No, <laughs> Very no, nice. No, good. The That's the way it should be. To play with. Yes. Swords. But yeah, so those are my two oldest. My uh, third is, uh, I lose track of it, born in April, so that makes him 19 months. Okay. Ish. And then my youngest is six months old. Wow. So those two are kind of close. Spread. It's a prize baby. <laughs> got a spread there. <laughs> That's okay. 15 months. Not, I don't recommend it. <laughs> uh, Revan, Not for Revan, Revan really, uh, he, I think Revan knows how you're feeling uh, I have one, uh, I pretty have well. I have a pair that's 10 months apart. 10 months? another one that's 16. Are you kidding me? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, no wonder you're here and yeah, not at well, home. <laughs> so, and then, you know, my family is blended. You know, my wife and I had... Oh, okay. Previous, I understand. So, uh, the age gap is 9887. Um, Four and two. Uh, wow. So, yeah, we've got a, quite a few really close together. And I, I would suggest if you ever have girls, make sure there's one in between, <laughs> a boy in between. Because <laughs> my two girls, yeah, they're constantly, right. uh, you know, they're 16 months apart. But, yeah, I mean, they're wearing the same size clothes. They like the same thing. And I love them to death. But, yeah, it's... That's boys a huge, are easier. Yeah. Well, that's a huge difference between boys and girls, right? Yeah. yeah two, I mean, two, boys two boys come into a room, close same and, clothes, yeah. they're best friends. Yeah, they're, they're best friends, <laughs> they're playing with the same toys. Girls are not the yeah. same. <laughs> Dude, we have the same shirt, we should hang out more often. Yeah. Yeah, no, so, it's, it's more like they like fighting over the same shirt. For some reason, they both want that shirt today. <laughs> I could go out and buy a new shirt and bring it home, you know, so, so the other one can wear it. Nope, they both now want to wear it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, of course. Yeah. So next time we're going to have kids, just separate the X's and Y's and make sure we have a girl then. <laughs> or a boy, if there is a girl in the mix somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm done. But, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Je, yeah have a, uh, girls are great. I enjoy my girls, but wow. Yeah. <laughs> Those two are maintenance. And I'm going to hate it when they get into their teenage years. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That'll be fun. <laughs> Can't wait to be a fly on a wall for that one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. 
So that's a little bit about my family. Nice. (laughs) Well, four four boys, that's good. That's a good-sized family, and you're out in Tooele. Don't see them much, though. I'm going to school 20 credit hours a semester. Wow. So where are you going to school? At the University of Utah. So you're going up to the U. Yeah. Nice. Commute in. That is a, a bit of a commute. Four days a day, four days a week. Oh, wow. <laughs> Are you working on top of that? or No, actually, just doing this full time. So, okay. So you're writing full time and going to school. I was writing full time. Was. <laughs> was writing. Until school started. And yeah. now it's become part time. I haven't looked at my latest manuscript since Jan- second week in January, and it breaks my heart. Wow. <laughs> But yeah, five thousand level English courses will do you in for your time. You're, wow, you're stuck with what you have. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. I, yeah, I, I don't think I could do school again. I still would like to do school, but yeah, yeah, that'll oh. be for what? That that won't be for another while. Okay, another while. <laughs> well, I gotta wait for the gotta wait for the wife to finish her school, and then oh. we'll actually have time and money and. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah, you can have mine. I've been going at least half time for 10 years. I've had enough. Okay. <laughs> wow. 10 years. Changes in degrees, yeah. This is still going to be my bachelor degree. Okay. I can understand. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Well, so what made you decide to become an author? Another loaded question. <laughs> yes. We are all about loaded questions. It keeps the conversation rolling. It does. <laughs> Um, there were two reasons, actually. Okay. <clears throat> the main reason was um, I've been reading books like uh, Lord of the Rings mm-hmm. and read some... Um, sorry, Brandon Sanderson. <laughs> <laughs> Made it uh, to book five of Will of Time. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I should apologize to Robert Jordan, but uh, the, his new proxy. Yeah. But uh, that kind of started running a little too long for me, so I... And when I go into school, I had to stop. But while reading these kind of books, I started to really question the exact makings of magic. Okay. You can't just slam a staff down and say you cannot pass and then wander off and be unable to, you know, cross a river or something. Oh, why not? <laughs> Come on. I wanted to create a well-defined magic system okay. that was unique and new and had its had its limits and its weaknesses Good. as well as its strengths. So that was my first Okay. So that's right. that's introducing well, true sight. <laughs> to be honest, I've never really read any of the Will of Time books. It was just like I got introduced and I'm like, there's already eight of these. <laughs> <laughs> and and they're not small books. No. No. <laughs> and so it's like, really? Do I want to read these? You know, yeah. and then I'm like, oh, I got other times because I start, you know, I was reading other books and they're smaller and get through those. Yeah. And then finally when I get back, to, interested to get back around, you know, that's when Brandon Sanderson started taking over, and it's like, there's how many now? Yeah, there's 13. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Um, no, thank you. <laughs> well, yeah, they're, they are not like a movie. I've heard, seen Red Forum chat about yeah. making them a movie. They're not fast-paced. There'd be a lot of splicing. Well, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's, there's a lot of slow paces. I mean, I've talked to several people. There's a lot of, you know, it, parts where you're with one group of characters or one character for a little while and then it splits off and you're up to another one because they split apart. And, of course, now Brandon Sanders has brought them all back together, but they were apart for a long time yeah. through several books and it's like you're bouncing around. And I can do that for a little bit. You know, I don't mind, and, you know, say, like, you know, sort of truth books where, you know, Richard and Kayla and Zed and all them were split apart. But they generally, by the, you know, towards the end of the book, they were back together. I don't know if I could deal with that over <laughs> that many books. Dealing with three different storylines from four different uh, people. I think there's like five or six different storylines. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> I, can, I can hardly make track of like when 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 I'm reading a book and like just during like halfway through the like you know one of the persons walks out to go get a sandwich. I, I usually have a hard time keeping track of <laughs> that storyline. Yeah, that happens in gaming. Yeah. Well, and you gotta hand it to them, though. Yeah, uh, they a lot of respect for being able to, well, yeah, to do keep that. that all together. Yeah, <laughs> but it's just not for my cup of tea for reading. So, and I may it may have been different if I started from the beginning, but you didn't start at the beginning. No, I didn't get the first book and then go from book to book to book. No, yeah, well, you jump in lost. Uh, no, well, no, it just. There's eight books, and then coming back, there's 13 books. Uh-uh. <laughs> I'm not back reading that bad. I've become, I've become quite uh, quite fond of uh, of audio books nowadays. 
seems to be the only way I've been able to get any sort of book reading or book knowledge. Yeah, I, I can't. I can't do audio books. I do a lot of. I do a because lot of because there's a lot of stuff that's cut out, and then really, I find that there, there have been. Huh. There's some that you know I've listened to the audio book, and I've kind of enjoyed it, and then I've gone back and actually read the book, and I'm like. Wait a minute. Wait, now, are you sure there's content cut out, or was your brain... No, there was up? all content, because oh, I went okay. back and, and listened to it again, and it's like, wow, this whole three chapters here that were really important are gone. Wow. Wow. You know, stuff like that. So, I, haven't, I haven't noticed any of that in my listenings, but, uh, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll, and then I, I, I spend most of my time in my truck anyhow, so... Yeah. Or, or, there, or the always, boring either. reader... Oh yeah, those yeah. are also those are always fun, especially yeah. at seven o'clock in the morning when you've yeah. been up for sixteen uh-huh. hours or yeah. for forty eight hours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I work overnight. Yeah. So won't. this is the beginning of your shift. Uh, actually, yeah. As soon as yeah. we get off, I'm I'm off to work. So he's on his way to Park City. Yay! Yay! I don't envy you. So yeah. let's jump so that's back. the first half. That is. <laughs> Now, the second half is actually a little bit more personal. Okay. Um, I, growing up a little bit, had issues with reading. Okay. Um, just decided it wasn't important. Yeah. And it wasn't yeah. until I hit my 20s that I finally caught the caught the vision reading, and realized, right? yeah. yeah, that uh, you can't escape literature. It's that, gonna uh, be every, that sounds yeah. very familiar. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to create an engaging read that would give uh, young adults a good excuse to want to read. So, no, I have to. I have to kind of admit, when I was younger, they didn't really have books for young adults. No, there really weren't. There really wasn't. And because I remember, you know, um, growing up, there wasn't a lot to read. You know, there's like the Princess Bride. You know. Yeah. Um, Well. No wonder they all stopped. I mean, what and, you can and a few <laughs> other books. I can't remember the books we read. You know, like Stein where the red was uh, was they, that was, was one of the authors I always wanted. Yeah, to. that was that was way after me. That was that was uh, a little bit after yeah, you. There was you know the, where the red fern grows and you know all those, and so there wasn't really a lot to so read. Basically, books that were written a hundred years before. Yeah, <laughs> the, the classic, the classic. Um, <laughs> and so I really wasn't into reading until about high school. Yeah, you know, and that's when I got into Dragonlance that Tracy Hickman wrote, and several other. I wrote, you know, I read The Hobbit, Lord of the Rings, and that's when the reading bug kind of bit me, and then I just haven't stopped since, which is great because I enjoy it. It's 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 a nice little way to escape, kind of. You know, you get you go to work or have the crappy day, you sit down, read a few chapters, and you're feeling great again. Well, and you know that's that's a plug I always put in towards books is how many times have you ever finished a movie and thought. Oh, you stopped there? Uh, <laughs> Why don't you keep going? A couple. But, yeah, books really drive me nuts, especially when they have those cliffhangers at the end. Oh, I can't say how many times I've read a book. <laughs> oh, my gosh, i got to wait a year? <laughs> don't start my book. Yeah. No. It, it, I, I've gotten over it, but, yeah, it's kind of how it's been. It's, oh, my gosh. You know, it's like um, John Brown, he's another author we've brought on. Mm-hmm. I got his book, and I read through I mean, I tore through it in two days. I was super psyched. I'm like, hey, John, when's the next one coming out? Well, here it's been a year and a half later, and he still doesn't know when it's coming out. Oh. oh. So I'm almost, yeah. That's like, that is frustrating. And it, 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 and it's, if you could be one of his test readers. Well, it's been, it's been because of re-edits and stuff like that. Right, and it's sure. like, oh, my gosh. I'm just like, I'm waiting for the next one. And, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and then there's nothing wrong with that. John's a great guy, but it's just like, man, I want to get on. You know, there's, there's a couple other books that I read where I read the first one, and I was really psyched, and the second one took almost three years before it came out. There's a lot time, of people that won't start yeah, a series well, because of that. And by I'm that time, finished. I really, I, it took me forever to read through the, the second and third book because I had just fallen completely out of interest. I even went back and reread the thir- the first one, and it just it didn't have that same feel to it. So it's tough. It is. <laughs> but I, I do love reading. So what was that? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Got these other weird things popping up. So, um, let's jump into the actual book itself. Okay. I've got some questions there, and if you you want to say pass, you're welcome to. If you don't, then all right. Oh, I'll never answer. pass a question. Good. How's it end? <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. Awesome. Go find out. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> so, um, 
you, you told us why. Now, what is, I'm, I'm assuming, because it's the Beholder series, I'm assuming the Beholder is a type of, we'll say, job or class or something like that, or wizard. What is a Beholder exactly? Okay. That's an excellent question. Great. There's no way I would pass that. After Good. all, the series is titled Beholder. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a Beholder is a wielder of true sight. Okay. Uh, and now, the beginning of Insight, the first book in the series, there is um, no Beholders existing in the world of Apernesia. They they were a part of the first age. So you started you start. 1,200 years into the second age of Apernesia. Okay. And um, back in, in their day of uh, of honor, I guess you could say, the Beholders existed uh, as the, the lieutenants over the king's elite guard. Their responsibility was to protect Apernesia and to keep at bay their um, their adversary, the Kalahine, kind of... Think think of a yeti on steroids with massive two foot claws, and the, these are the Kalahine. <laughs> That's pretty sweet. Actually. Uh, burrowers that operate as a hive kind of mentality, hmm. and so they have their hands full. And then during the first stage, they had a final offensive where they decided to wipe out the Kalahine, and many people were killed, but some became jealous of the beholders, so they killed off all the beholders. And oh, none were left. Thus enter insight. <laughs> mm. So then, yeah, that's where the story picks up. A boy finds out he has true sight, that he's the first beholder in 1,200 years, and he has no idea what to do with his life. Interesting. <clears throat> now, is there any other type of magic besides the true sight in the, in the story? No. Um, hmm. That's pretty much it. Although there's many levels of true sight. It's not like a... Magic wand wielding. Yeah. Or there's there's no incantations or um, staffs or wands or anything like that. The the magic in true sight, excuse me, in insight is um, is the ability to see the world's energy and how it operates in the world, kind of like okay. a hazy cloud. And then you can learn to study it and learn to manipulate it through your body and make an impact on the world around you uh, through through an true sight, the ability to see the world as it really exists. Wow, that's kind of interesting. So, yeah, there and there's many different levels of what you're capable of doing the more you start to understand. Um, it can begin with basic elemental control, like mm-hmm. think airbender kind of tactics, yeah. but that's just the tip of the sword. That's just where it starts. Nice. And I'm, I'm assuming the character is going to develop in his powers as the series goes along. Well, it, it's kind of a tricky thing because it's not so easy for the main character. He actually starts, the magic starts to kill him because he oh. has no idea how to control it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it actually, the first book is a quest for survival, not okay. a not a quest to save the world kind yeah. of a thing. So nice. I, I actually kind of like that story. Um, there's a few authors that have used something similar where, you know, the magic is actually so much that it's actually killing the wielder in a way until they learn how to use it or focus it. So, Will yeah. of Time. <laughs> Happened to Rand. Will for a of while. Time, <laughs> you know, it's in a sort of true series. Yeah. It was Richard. Um, and so I like that because it makes it so they have to learn it. It's not just like suddenly I have magical powers and can go out and Ta-da. save the world. I have to do something about it. But yeah, and it also works for my method to allow the reader to learn the magic as. It's developed through the story, so mm-hmm. works for twofold. <laughs> nice, very nice. Okay, well, do you want to take a break? We yeah, can take sure. a small break. Yeah, yeah, a little yeah. small break. Okay, we'll take a small break. Um, anyone can go do their little things they need to, and we will be right back. Okay, we're gonna play a little short song called Kindle. We'll be back. Thank you. 
Hey, well, we're back. Oh, hey, welcome back. I didn't even realize the music ran out. Oh, well. That's what happens when I don't have my earphones on. That last little bit was just silent air. It was artistic. Yes, we were taking a moment of silence for Whitney pause. Houston. <laughs> Who? <laughs> that's why, I'm just saying that's why it was why, quiet. Why, uh, Whitney Houston passed away. That, that's yeah, I know. great. I know. Okay, a moment of silence for the death of Mogo. Yeah, that happened a few months back, but yes, Mogo is dead. Killed by Jon Stewart. Next. <laughs> <laughs> he sucked in the Black Lantern energy and blew up a planet. I know. Well, at least he went out with a bang. Yes, he did. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Too soon. Um, For those of you, I don't know if you can hear her in the background. You but cannot Nibby, hear Nivy. N- N- Nivy is here. Nivy has joined us. She's, uh... Running around like she usually does, not yeah. picking up the microphone or talking, but she is here. Yeah, she should have been here last week doing the uh, the thriller dance. Tracy would have laughed. Oh, he would have. That would have been. <laughs> yeah, and I love how you rub that in completely after the fact the show's over. That that really, you know. I told you that he was coming. Oh, wait, I remembered oh. you. Yeah. <laughs> but he remembered. Yay. Yeah. He he said it with a giant smile on his face. Yay. So he'll, he's, he'll be back in May, and so we'll bring you back in. I, I might not be here in May. What? I might be out of town as a, a guest for a convention. For the entire month of May? Well, not the entire month, but probably knowing your timing, the fact... Probably the it'll be time. When we get him on, it'll be the same time you're gone. Yeah. Awesome. Mm-hmm. All right. Douchebag. Hey! <laughs> it's a clean Queen show. Please. Clean show. Clean show. Anyways, uh... <clears throat> So back to back to the beholder. Apernesia. 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 Product of one of my uh, friend's creations. So it's not your creation. No, actually, we spent about three months trying to come up with the name of this place. Okay, so that that was my next question: is what was it like creating it? But if you didn't create it, well, the world I created, not the, the name. Oh, the world you created. <laughs> well, that makes a big difference. Yes. Yeah, I should be clear about what? that. What? So. Awesome! That is a fantastic cell phone ring. We're going to be over here. You know, Turning now that we're listening kay. to Mario, Super Mario Brothers, I my, my so brother-in-law just attended a concert at the Bravano <laughs> Hall. Yeah. Now, I can't remember the name of it. He's The video game one? Yeah, the video yeah. game conference. Yeah, that he was said, awesome. They had, yeah, they had the, 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 the writer. The Zelda and all that. Yeah, the writer of the theme music for Super Mario Brothers Skyped onto the, in, into the show for him. And he just he said he just had this look on his face like, I cannot believe after 15 years people still want to listen to this song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my ringtone. Can't hear it. There we go. You don't know what that is, do you? Me? Yeah. That sounds like Final Fantasy. It's the crystal room in Final Fantasy IV. Uh-huh. Yeah. Since we're doing this. Yes, I know. Uh, Ringtone. Yay! I'm such a trendsetter. Duck Hunt! Yay! My phone sucks. <laughs> have, you, have you seen the YouTube uh, Duck Hunt uh, where they're messed up, the ducks, and it shows behind the scenes? No. <laughs> you need to look at because pretty much the dog is back there saying, "Okay, you need this, you need this," and you know, and um, 
you know, the faster ducks are kind of like on math or crack or something like that. <laughs> and that's why they're being erratic. Like yeah. And then they're like, we got it. And then a duck comes in, or one of the duck comes in freaking out. And he's like, what's wrong? And he's like, we got a cheater. He's got a game genie and he's sticking up the gun to the glass. <laughs> 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 so he's like, yeah, we got to, they got to hook it. They do some weird bomb concoction and, I feel so and bad. It, I the duck is just flying around like crazy <laughs> and then not a yeah it's, so, a <laughs> it's funny you got to see it. it's on uh college humor yeah. <laughs> i would play it but we can't play it on here oh i, I can't yeah yeah we used to be able to we used to oh not so, anymore so what was it like creating your world because i mean you've read all these other books you've seen those worlds and now you have this this little ball of people on it that you've created that is now kind of has a life of its own now that the first book's out and then the second book is developing or third or wherever you're at there. Yeah. <laughs> the process of creation. Well, yeah. actually, it started with the creation of the magic of okay. True Sight because that's where I wanted to originate. Yeah. <clears throat> and I spent about four months brainstorming and refining and critiquing and erasing and starting over and until finally my... Uh, it was a conversation with my dad. He actually came up with the concept, actually as a joke. He was laughing to himself. And I just sat back in my chair and thought, that is a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> so then it went from there and evolved. And and actually, it um, surprisingly, the story came together really quickly once that was developed. Um, even the, you know, I, I have maps of Aponesia in my book. And uh, even the maps, I took out a lined sheet of paper one day and spent about four hours and created the world in just four hours nice. where I wanted everything to flow. <laughs> so <laughs> it ended up working out. Can't put really it up nice. on the website. Yeah. <laughs> so it was all on just like a, pe a normal sheet of paper. Yeah. Actually, I have it right here if you want. Nice. To see what it looks like. Yeah, I'm giving oh. giving these guys a little peek what into the Stormy world. What is Stormy doing? Of, Neener, behind the neener, scenes neener. that you don't you show to it. everybody. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Yay, you cannot see this? This is the joys of radio. It no it one else gets to see. Secret. Oh, wow. Transformed. Well, that's actually not really bad at all. From that nope. into the... There story. it is. Ta-da. Ta wow. <laughs> so there's actually, there's actually one in the book. So if you want to actually see what we're looking at, which is really impressive. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Man, I can't even draw a straight line, and yeah. you've got so, mountains uh, and gullies. And <laughs> there's, uh, there, there's a book that has these pictures in there. If you Very want to nice. See what we're looking at. It's called Insight. Insight, yeah. Yes. If you just go to TerranJames.com, that's my, it'll route you to my website I'm using right now. Nice. So, where can the book be found? Nowhere. Nowhere. Yeah. Absolutely nowhere. So we're oh, talking to you, and they can't get it anywhere. Yeah, <laughs> and there's a reason for that. Kind of a pending, exciting announcement in the air. Nice. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with how Christopher Paolini became yes. famous. Yes. I, I'm having the same experience right now. Well, oh. that's amazing for you. <laughs> so, yeah. Don't forget us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I'm totally famous. <laughs> you guys are pawns before me. Yes. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Well, I at least get night status, okay? I know how to direct the conversation completely away from the conversation, but <laughs> you get the de You're the derailer. I am the derailer. <laughs> you're not the, the uh, get person on the track. <laughs> mm -mm. Yeah. ADHD for the win. The well, that's, switch that's actually pretty right? good, yeah. though, that you, you're kind of experiencing the same thing, especially when this is your first book. Yeah. Yeah. We've had several authors come on, and a lot of them, it takes quite a while before they get a book out. You know, there have been a few that, you know, that have been lucky with their first go around. You know, Larry, mm -hmm. Larry Korea, the same sure. way. Uh, That's but, really cool to hear. But to hear that, you know, especially in the young adult market, it's kind of tough. Well, and even fantasy, uh, there seems to be fantasy this. even more. Well, yeah, there's, there's this. A uh, misunderstood conception in the world that fantasy novels are overwritten. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think maybe if we're thinking of the world of vampires, perhaps. Well, I think I think the problem with that is, is a lot of people are, are basing off a of token. Yeah. You know, great books, but there is a lot of you know adjectives and well, and not just that content. In the, the well. content in that that's like, really? Does this need to be in here? So, time for a disclaimer. There are no elves or dwarves in the world of Aponesia. All human? All human based. No, except for. Oh. I don't it. get my elfish. Nope. Ah, well, she likes elves. 
They're still brutal. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm saying. Uh, but yeah, there's a, a couple of creations of creatures, but mostly th- think of a medieval story with fantastic magic and nice. insight into a world that they would have that they wouldn't have known back then. Okay. And kind of written as I my whole approach to it was: What would the Middle Ages have been like if America was around during that time? If the United States existed, what would a medieval United States be like. So their language is a little bit more casual, a little bit more Western, uh, okay. lots of, you know, slangs and things. And so, yeah, trying to Americanize, you know, if this was ever made a movie, there would be no English accent in this story. <laughs> Yay! Oh, because I've been reading it with an English accent. No. Yeah. Oh, well, that's your fault. Oh, okay. <laughs> so there's no dwarves to do the Scottish accent. Crap! Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> But plenty of brutality. No David Tennant. Can't, he can't, no David Tennant. Bye. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, that's that's still reasonable. I mean, that's that's kind of... I mean, the one thing, you know, I had a problem with with the Aragon movie is they stripped all that out. You mean they stripped <laughs> everything out? <laughs> Pretty much. You know, there's no the, dwarves, the there's no elves. The music, though, was awesome. The music was great. I liked the dragon. Of course, the feathers on the wings kind of... Dr- Drove yeah, me nuts. Not impossible. Um, <laughs> there were reptilians with feathers. Need we go there? I know, but that, they were completely covered in feathers, not partially. Really? Yes. I need to uh, <laughs> let's see. Um, so yeah, it was no mention really of even weird. roaring in the entire. Yeah, there, I mean, there's nothing. <laughs> and so it's like, you, how do you make a sequel? Because you the can't. sequel involves all of that. Exactly. They didn't. So <laughs> no, they couldn't. They ruined that. Um, yeah. Everything. <laughs> so at least you don't have to worry about that happening. No, absolutely. Um, so well, all humans, though. Yeah. Well, we kind of got sidetracked, though. Yes. I, I didn't quite finish my explanation we'll of the publishing thing either. Yes. Uh, I I was <laughs> not, uh, during a uh, a long conversation. I ended up um, having my. Man, or my novel looked at by a publisher, Jolly Fish Press. It's a new, um, well, I'm impressed with it. <laughs> a new publishing house actually coming out of Provo. Jolly? Uh, J-O-L-L-E-Y? Jolly Fish, yeah, oh, J-O-L-L-Y. But, yeah, I'm, I'm in the final stages of review. They've, they've already requested exclusivity on my manuscript. <laughs> Hey, Pathing Whispers. My family is named Jolly. Is that uh, your last name? Not my last name, but uh, my mother's side of the family. That's their last name. Well, maybe they'll give you a job. You can just go knock on their door. I don't need a job. You've got a good job. What are you talking about? You've got a good job. Read a book. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's great, though, that you've got a, a good publisher behind you, and that's tough to do, especially now that it seems like Publishing houses are kind of closing down, and yeah. we had a friend of ours that, uh, you know, he got a five book series and published the first two, and then they cl- cleared out their entire fantasy and science fiction. And I know. Said, okay, we're done. So his series became orphaned, and so now he's got had to go to self publishing, and I mean it's really tough. Yeah, you know, and that a lot of the normal bookstores are closing down, and well, I've been, I I agree. I've been a self published author for six months and that I've been really impressed with these guys. That's they good. they have a a very experienced executive editor nice. um with his foot in the door with Penguin and um the um oh, my mind has gone blanked. Ah the writing journal. Uh oh my goodness. Anyway, everyone knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'll just stop sure before I shove yeah. my foot no, <laughs> further fine. into my mouth. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, he has lots of connections and a young, vibrant staff that is very ambitious. Nice. So, very impressive. So, the only drawback, though, is um, they're seriously considering it. There hasn't actually been a contract proposal, but uh, should we finalize all of this? Insight will be re-released, but not until 2013. So everyone that has a copy of a book that's already on the market, hold on with white knuckles. <laughs> that's wow. blows up and becomes amazing. Sure, yeah. Never get it again. So, 
you may not have to get it for another year. Yeah. And then the sequel is probably another year after that. Not necessarily, because I already have the second book written. Okay. So they, that may come quickly, quickly following. Okay. <laughs> that would be tough. Yeah. Especially since I'm reading it to end it. And then it doesn't officially come out till the 2013. And even if I have to wait another six months, that's over a year. Yeah, I'm sure there are plenty of people that have been bugging me because yeah. I, up until this conversation with the publishing house, I have been telling people spring 2012, spring 2012, yeah. book two coming out. Yeah. So I'm sure there's quite a few people that are like, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, everyone. Sorry. So because you can self-publish, that's. That would explain why you've been going out to schools and stuff like that to, yeah. to push it and get them interested. Well, actually, uh, my my involvement with schools hasn't been to market myself. Oh, okay. uh, that's that's the second half of my writing to oh. want to get people to read. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, seriously, I I think I read two books from seventh grade all the way through graduating high school, and. Uh, I actually decided to read one book, uh, Huckleberry Finn, when I was in 11th grade. I thought, let's give this a try. And I loved it, got excited, went back, and I got a worse score on the comprehensive exam than I did when I didn't read the book. So mm. that, I don't want anyone else to have this same miserable yeah. experience as me. I want them to enjoy literature, to know how much fun it is. So Yay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I've, I've, I've looked at your website and seen some of the pictures, and it seems like... They've been pretty fun. A couple of them have shown up directly. Eccentric. Up with a tattoo on your face. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's, that's awesome. You're you're kind of giving them a visual of what of the book as well, besides explaining what's going on. <laughs> Which is exciting. Being the chapter present for the Twilight chapter, it's I'm able to do the same thing with um, grown ups as well as the youth. So no. I love to. Help. <laughs> How old do the kids get into the? Uh, into these things, do they do they get into it pretty good? Do they uh, receive you pretty well, or is it just oh, it's just another weird guy? It being the workshops I go to. Yeah, the workshops. Well, I think my costume is an icebreaker. <laughs> so as soon well, as I walk in like that, it's like just oh. as crazy as we are. <laughs> and it's, even even the high school students, you can see their eyebrows raised yeah. and, uh, with curiosity. So well, that's kind of how we were we were just talking with um, some friends of mine who were working on some costumes for kind of a weekender, and we were saying if you don't really show how in enthusiastic you are about your creation, no one else is really going to yeah. reciprocate that. Yeah. So it's kind of nice to hear that you are so much into your work that you're willing to even dress up in it. And where I like to cosplay and dress up in costumes anyway, that's kudos point. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I can't wait. I wish Halloween was 365 days a year. Oh, yes, really. <laughs> in my world, it is. You can make Halloween every day. No, I'm a married adult, and my wife wished Halloween way. didn't exist. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's my favorite yes. holiday. Unfortunately, the kids that come to my house, that's not their favorite holiday, because they're generally screaming down the street as they run away from my house. That's because you're just me. Speaking no, of... I like yeah. the scares kids. Well, it also doesn't help that you, you know, decorate your front yard with actual body parts and real blood. Well, of course. That's, That's the joke. best way to do it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. The cheapest. Yeah. <laughs> you know. You're the reason why we can't have nice things. And, and coffins and with, you know, animatronics that demons that pop out of coffins. And, and but the have... best thing is just cloak holding still. The oh. kids walk up to you, poke you. Is that real? Is that real? <laughs> and you don't just move. a little. You don't move. You oh, yeah. don't move. And then, then when they finally like, okay, it's fake. And then they walk up the rest of the way up to the door, you know, and you have this thing with that's holding a bowl of candy, and it says take a couple, and they start taking some, and you walk up behind them, and you notice they're taking more than a couple. Like, <laughs> I said only one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, they're gone. I uh, just laugh at this because I'm one of those kids that's like, hey, 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 and they are oh, screaming the whole way down. But, well, I was living but in again, California, that's kind of what yeah. me and my uh, me and my neighbor did. Was, yeah. He was actually he was actually dressed up like Jason Voorhees. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he, had, he, had a, he had a chainsaw. Didn't have the chain on it. Yeah. I was dressed up like Michael Myers. Yeah. And uh, oh, yeah. yeah, it was that was one of the funnest Halloweens ever. I never understood why Jason has a chainsaw. He doesn't have a chainsaw in any of those movies. No, no. it's that is true. I never thought of that. Yeah. That's true. Jason and Leatherface, it's, but yeah, it's just it's it's the chainsaw. It's what it's happens scary. when people make things wrong. But um, <laughs> yeah. But the funny thing is, those kids come back like an hour later with their friends. Oh my gosh, you got to check. Yeah, that. trying to prove themselves. <laughs> yeah. And you get them a different way. <laughs> oh, but by that time, I've changed costumes. 
Now, I got to experience it from the outside. I, I grew up in Kearns, mm-hmm. and my next-door neighbor had a scarecrow out on his porch for the entire month of October. Uh-huh. But, of course, he traded places on yeah, the uh, Halloween uh, night, uh, and uh, uh, <laughs> they'd walk by, and he'd just, you know, he'd just move a hand. He didn't even wow. go at him, and they'd, ah! Yeah. <laughs> well, it's been hand. out there the time, <laughs> Yeah, sure. Well, to be fair, you know, Kearns is a pretty creepy place. So if you're already looking to be creeped out <laughs> on Halloween, then bam, it just makes it... Horrible. <laughs> so now with going out to the schools and that, yeah, you know, have you seen the kids, you know, an interest in the book from, you know, are the school di- districts picking up the book so the kids can get it? I mean, that it is, yeah, well, it is kind of tricky because yeah. I'm self-published. Um, I have been donating a couple of books to every school that I go to, and classrooms have actually been. Re- Oh, nice. bef- uh, before I go there, and those have been the most successful workshops. But uh, th- there has been excitement afterwards. Like I, I did a tour down to Cedar City um, in November, uh, visited three different schools down there, and I got an email a week later from the bookmobile lady saying, "I need a, I need your book. I'm getting requests for it like crazy down here." Wow. <laughs> so there, there is an interest picking up. Which I mean, of course, it's exciting as as a businessman, but yeah. even more exciting for me is the fact that kids are, that my purpose for writing it is being fulfilled. That yeah. Kids are wanting to read this and being excited about it. Well, that is nice. That's really good. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Especially when you you get that phone call. We need more. <laughs> that's that's what an author always <laughs> wants to hear. Put it in the other phone call of, yeah, can you pick up these extras? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Can we get a return shipping label, please? <laughs> <laughs> My favorite thing is when you see a book come out, and you know they, they're all talking, it's all hype, and you know, of it. And then, like three weeks later, you see it on the discount bin. Yeah, that's oh, kind of depressing. Yeah. Too. Oh. When you see that, it's like, what's wrong with this book? <laughs> and you and you pick it up just to see what is wrong. Yeah, with this book. Yeah, sure. <laughs> well, that good marketing then, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, sparkly vampires just don't work. <laughs> well, I should also throw another disclaimer in here yes. that we we've been talking kids, 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 yes. but there is a, a a just as large adult spectrum of readers as well. Um, I was careful when I wrote the book to keep the story simple enough that I've had kids as young as nine years old read it, mm-hmm. but I've had purchases up to seventy seven years old that have been equally interested, but for very, very different yeah. reasons, the subtle complexities of the story. Right. So. Well, that's kind of the nice thing about the young adult market is you can get both. You can get mm-hmm. the adult market and the younger readers, yeah. whereas if you're you're not in that market, you're only getting the adults, and it's you're really kind of rare that you get like anyone young reading those books. Mm-hmm. Which also made it tricky, too, because I had to try and keep the content at a level that it would be okay for nine years old, but would still engage the adult Adults as well. So it was. Yeah, I'm sure that is tricky. I never had to deal with that. But <laughs> I just write for my gamers, and that's about it. And that is complex to deal with. <laughs> yeah, I just write. Nah. Yeah, I just sent out a new thing. Did you read it? I don't know if I can do this campaign. Yay! <laughs> awesome. <laughs> the desert. Yeah, it's a desert. This place sounds like a living hell. It yeah. does. And then throw in a little bit of Roman gladiators in there, awesome. gladiatorial arenas, and a tyrant sorcerer I'll be impressed king. with the execution. Magic can't be used because anytime magic is used, it defiles the land around you, and it drains life from animals and people and plants. And My monk is going to have so much fun in this place. Yeah. I know. <laughs> other, than, other than none of his water skins are going to have water in it. Oh, yeah, water is like, really expensive. I'm sure it is. <laughs> Metal is rare. Yeah, it's going to be fun. We'll I'm probably going to play do. a bard. Mm. I hate bards, but I'm probably going to play a bard. I'm not. Uh, bards That's use magic. usually how it goes, right? <laughs> and I, I always land. do something that is always against what is the <laughs> norm. You know this. Yep, bards use magic, and that defiles the land. You will be shunned. This is a first for me. Well, that's true. You a played bard a, you, being shot. I know. It doesn't really Perfect. sound like you'd have that good. They, they'd have that good of a job. Yeah, yeah. no kidding. Well, this is the. But her last character was a cler, a female cler, elven cleric, priest, or priest. That was mute. She had a a silent spell cast on her tongue. Okay. Hey, it's not my fault. I told off my god and didn't want to hear me anymore. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, let me tell you. That was mute. You're right, but you weren't a cleric. No, I wasn't a cleric. <laughs> 
kind of difficult to cast spells that you need verbal components to, and you can't speak. Hey, but I had the silent cast feet, so I was still useful. Yes. I work around my, my yeah. you know, disabilities. Hey, yeah. leave me alone. Now, are you excited about your book? I mean, Absolutely. It, you know, it's been something you've developed and you've kind of created. It's my baby. Yeah, it, it, it's like a child. And now it's out there, sort of. <laughs> it was. So. It was out there and now it's kind of, this is kind of weird. Because once the baby's out there, it can't come back. But yours is kind of getting put back into the oven. I guess, so, yeah, I should start watching for eBay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there will be some bid wars going on. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I am absolutely excited. Um, I've put a lot of blood and sweat. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mentioned my school schedule. I It took me three years, to, well, two years of writing and a year of revising, Um for insight, and most of that writing was done between the hours of 4.30 and 7 in the morning before I got up and went to school and then went to my job. So, yeah. Wow. <laughs> it was... See, that's my problem. That's why I can't write a book. I'm just too lazy to get up that early and write. Well, the trick is get unemployed. <laughs> yeah, I was. And I, and, I, and I started writing. I got I got a few chapters, and then I got a job again. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta you gotta pay the bills. You gotta pay rent. And all I'm, that I'm stuff. still I'm still I'm still just dealing with the newborn. So yeah, you really newborn. Don't have, you really not don't much have sleep. Much time. <laughs> and sleep is a luxury. Sleep? Just one newborn. Yeah, one newborn. It's it's his first. Yeah. It's my first. Only a one. rude awakening. Yeah. <laughs> True. It's when you learn that sleep. Oh boy, did I miss it! It's overrated. I, I, I just miss my side of the bed. You have a side of your bed? Not anymore. I have I have like a corner that is mostly encompassed by my. That, that's mostly I, my. Uh, I pretty much nightstand. skirt the edge. <laughs> well, you have time to buy a cot on my nightstand yeah. and yeah. on my bed. It's like the perfect balance. If I go either way, I'm falling. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I, we, we, we lucked out. We had to be, it's we amazing play, how that uh, small of a kid can take up that much space in a bed. Mm-hmm. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're back. I am back. There you go. I was saying, who who are you telling? I've, I've got a pretty big bed, and it just seems like when he's lonely in his bed, he comes in mine, and all of a sudden, it's like, where did the edge of the bed come from? Yeah. <laughs> where did the space in the bed come from? <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. And, you know, I, you know, traditionally, you sleep up and down. On a bed. Kids sleep at angles, sideways. Upside down. Upside down. Hanging off the side. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I, I, I can't remember. I, I saw this YouTube video where they were just showing kids randomly sleeping. in the way, And this one kid was standing on a stool, laying on the counter half off. And he just fell asleep <laughs> like he was in the middle of making a peanut butter wow. and jelly sandwich. And just fell asleep. Yeah. I was just like, I can never do that. I can't sleep that way anymore. I think if you were really tired, you'd be surprised in what positions you could find yourself sleeping in. I'm sure. Potentially. Yeah. The older you get, your head just kind of sinks into your shoulders. You see them <laughs> like falling turtle. asleep straight up like a turtle. <laughs> turtle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so are there any mythical creatures or in your yes. book? Yep. Okay. Two of my own creations. Okay. The Callahan I already mentioned. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's their race, I should say. Uh-huh. Um they're composed of ground troops called the Kelsh, and there are uh, the flying evil guys called the Seath. The Seath. Nice. And then uh, besides that, there's the Graves that are the companions to the Beholders. Okay. Uh, now, don't think Aragon. There's no magical bond. They can't read each other's minds. They're just Good. they're just buds of a common cause. <laughs> uh, like Huck and Finn. Sure. There you go. All right. So, no dragons. No dragons. I'll show you this picture of the grave again so you can see what one actually looks like. Okay. Further into I'll my book. i describe it as the picture shows up. No, think, no. Make, make them pick the, up the book. Don't, well, don't describe it. It is on my website. If you go to my website and look that at World cool of Appalachia, right there. that is the Kelsh. That's that why I said a, sweet. a Yeti on steroids. Yeah. <laughs> that is pretty cool. You're not kidding. <laughs> so, yeah, if you want to see what a Yeti on steroids looks like, go look wow. for Kelsh on my website. Nice. <laughs> but, yeah, the creeper. Who, who did the art? Uh, his name is Matt Odell. He actually owns a pet store on Redwood and Mark's about Forty First South. Mark's, is it Mark's yeah, art? Yeah, Mark's <laughs> art. He's well. the owner. Yeah, Matt Odell, I, very talented he, artist. <laughs> Talk about worlds colliding. I'm, I'm just wondering, he, they, uh, he, Julie was that her name? Is he dating her or married to her? 
Julia? I'm not I sure. Blonde? No. I just remember an old boss of mine used to work there. Yeah. So, yeah, he put all the components into it of exactly <laughs> what kind of details you'd need of a burrower and stuff right. like that. I like the fact well, that that's Owning like an animal store would give him an insight for that. Absolute insight. Yeah, uh-huh. uh-huh. <laughs> and then there's your grave. Okay. Uh, I try to avoid classifications. Uh, just think of a long, furry beast creature with yeah. a, with feathered wings and an armored tail with a, de- a gem on the end of it. So huh. you look at this little girl down there, you get an idea of the size of these guys. Is that a, uh, supposed to be a fountain? Yeah, okay. yeah. He's not That's, breathing he's breathing not water. Chunks <laughs> anything, okay. Yeah, a water fountain. <laughs> I was wondering about that picture. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's hey, a pretty interesting asked, looking exactly. creature. So... Instead of going with traditional fantasy, you've created your own creatures in, in the world. So that's that's really impressive. Make it unique. Yeah. And that's yeah. nice to hear because you, it is that fine line where something can be so unique that people are enthralled with it, and then it's, it can be so unique that people can't relate to it yeah. as easily out the back. So it's really, once again, it's cool to hear that you're on that path to where everything is seems to be working out really well for you. Well, which I, I attribute a lot of that to why this I was able to get in touch with this publishing house because they see it as a unique idea mm-hmm. that they can market, that can help them become a, a worldwide successful company. We'll right. help each other out. <laughs> so, yeah. That is cool. Questions? Whoa. So, <laughs> I always have to ask this one, and maybe someone did ask it before I got here, but what happened to you when you hit a writer's block? I don't hit writer's blocks. You, you don't hit writer's I blocks? I don't. It's and that makes a three. lot of people mad. <laughs> How is that possible? <laughs> yeah, that's my question because you're the third author that has said that. And each have relatively good, you know, justifications behind why they don't. But why? So do you get to a point in the story where you're kind of stuck and you're like, okay, I'll get back to this later and jump to something else? Like a video game or something. Yeah. Well, uh, a video game or maybe another section of the book, maybe a couple chapters down. No, I have to write from the left to right. So I, 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 I don't bounce around because um, my outline of the book is more emotional um, versus um, mm. contextual. So if I write a second half of the book, that could be a completely different place than where it will end up as yeah. I'm actually writing. So, um, so actually, that's part of the reason I don't reach writer's box. I'm, I'm relying on the voices in my head. <laughs> Which are always awesome. Yeah, and they, they speak way too loud sometimes. <laughs> I, I, I can't complain about voices in my head. <laughs> but then the other reason is um, the music I listen to when I write. I own over 700 movie soundtracks, and I have a song for every scene. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> so if I get stuck and I need to write something, I'll throw something on. And actually, one of my favorite no, writing. I got a terabyte worth of music. I mean, I might as well put it to use. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Sweet. If you can put a soundtrack to our campaign, you can put a soundtrack oh, that you can write yeah. to. So. I've got some awesome evil dark music. Well, so I, I hate you. My, we haven't even started. If I were to write to my huh? music, it would be like. The most I think <laughs> I think a might, Picasso yeah, piece. Be so, <laughs> it would be so together. There'd be like one side, one one chapter would be like all blood, guts, and screaming and fire, and then the next chapter would be like a love story. Happy fairies happy fluttering happy fairies around the feathers. <laughs> I can see that now. Yeah. Well, if you want a good soundtrack to start with, I recommend the soundtrack for Halo ODST. Okay. It has a phenomenal soundtrack. Are you growling at Halo? I'm a Halo fan. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you said Gears of War, she'd be freaking out. <laughs> hey, there's a good soundtrack in three. I gotta try something here. Gears of War. <laughs> Halo. Gears of War. <laughs> Halo. Stop it! <laughs> Pull chain. <laughs> giddy, giddy. There you go. <laughs> Stop exploiting my weaknesses. Yes. But of course, Lord of the Rings soundtrack is always yeah, that was a really good. And if you get the extended version, you have 11 hours of listening yeah. bliss. If you enjoy that. <laughs> I'm Spotify excited for The Hobbit. Just some good. Ooh. That will be a phenomenal show. I'm so glad Peter Jackson that. did that. Yep, you got four days only. No. Four days only for what? The Hobbit. Then, the, then according to the Mayans, the world ends. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Didn't you hear the real reason why the world ends? Haven't you seen the Mayan calendar? Oh, no. No. Not this I forget it. I was hoping you'd remember. <laughs> well, there's several interpretations. I mean, there's a joke going around. Yeah. Uh, they I ran out of rock? Yeah, yeah. they ran out of the no. face. 
uh, there's a couple there's a couple beliefs that there's a uh, an astronomical shift, and that's what they were predicting. But it's really Cthulhu. Oh, that's what it was. It's we were right on the subject. Yeah. It's a countdown to the Hobbit. That's yeah. what it was. No. <laughs> and then there's another one where it's uh, it's when magic will be reintroduced into the world, stuff like that. Yeah. I like that one. Yeah, but uh, some people will change into different creature races. Like some people end up like being elves one. or I'll dwarves. Probably, I'll or, probably be a dwarf or, or a goblins. Goblin. <laughs> or ogres. I'm too tall for a goblin. Probably an ogre. <laughs> yeah, fat enough for an ogre. Thank you. You said ogres are fat. 90% ogres are fat. Oh, okay. Just because. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's normal to them. Well, I would pick a raider. A raider? A raider. <laughs> that's, a... Now, that's my next question. What is a raider? <laughs> there you go. Raiders are the, the bad guys of the book, at, no. least, at least to start with. Okay. Uh, their nation, uh, we have our own practices for boys when they're first born in our world today. Uh, in the raider world, uh, boys and girls are branded on their right temple with a, a what's called the king's cross. Just think of a... Well, if you really want to see what it looks like, you can go to my website. But yeah, kind of like a Chinese like, uh, star like looking thing. Game with the books. This one. Yeah. 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 I actually put that on my girl's foot. Really? Yes. Very it, cool. it was her first taste of ink. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully not her life. <laughs> uh-huh. But yeah. So the Raiders are they're pretty tough. Think of Spartans as enemies. Nice. Of <laughs> fighter fighting beasts that can wail on the enemy. So. They were originally the elite guard of the king of Aponesia. They were the ones that revolted and killed off all the beholders, so they oh. were exiled from the nation. Oh, wow. Wow. So. That's really cool to hear the history behind this. Like, it, it shows the thought that goes into it, and I think that's what makes me exciting about history. a book to hear. <laughs> there is a history. Now, I, I actually noticed in the back of your book there's actually a glossary, which, is, which thank you very much for putting the glossary. You are so welcome. <laughs> there are so many times I've been reading books, like, I just, I'm just, uh, okay, what is... What is this? Um, Start reading young adult books, and then yeah, you find yeah. out. Well, well, like, like, you know, listening to uh, listening to the uh, the Mistborn series, and, and they're talking. Well, you, would would you be happy if I would you brought an Inquisitor? I'm like, what's an Inquisitor? <laughs> well, you can't. I don't know if they have glossaries and audio books. It's still just, you know. Well, even in times, the books themselves, they don't have. A one. lot of the yeah. times, the books just go. Don't worry. It'll be explained later, and yeah. you know, it's kind of nice to say, "Oh, it'll be explained later." But you know, then it's a, "It'll be explained later." But if you want to know now, yeah, go to the glossary. Yeah. That's well, nice. and not only that, it has a pronunciation guide, so if oh, you want to wow. know how to say these people's names, he definitely right, knows how to. Make sure. Wow. <laughs> Your amazing. book has just been upgraded to level two. Level two. Yeah. Dun, 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 <laughs> But I was actually creating a glossary became a larger task than I originally thought it would be because um, I've always been frustrated. I'll use Aragon as an example. I would see someone's name and be like, oh, wait, who was that? So I'll go to the back and there's just, just no explanation. Yeah. And then as I started creating it, I realized I can't tell you who these guys are or I'll be spoiling the entire story. Yeah. So I have to find out a way to offer some kind of tingle in your mind that if you knew this, you'd know who they are to everyone else. So it actually became a rather large challenge. Wow. So that's that's a little shout out to all my glossary creator friends. <laughs> be be kind to them because <laughs> it is difficult to put together. <laughs> well, yeah, not only that, you don't want to give away too much, too much of the story. So. And curse all you people that read the last chapter first. Curses to you. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh. Yeah. I have been finding that. more and more. I have to read the whole book. I can't <laughs> skip. <laughs> well, why would you want to spoil the yeah, target? Anyway. <laughs> I used to be one of those people that read the last page, but not the last chapter, and I stopped doing that. See, I'll look at the last page and see how many pages there are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I just pace myself that way. But I, I never read. I the prologue. That's, I'm like, no. really? 40 pages of intro? Nah. Oh, well, my prologue's only... Oh, it's like a page and a half, and then you have like a... Yeah, first chapter. And it, it's something. Yeah, <laughs> his first chapter is his prologue. No, oh, his, 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 his prologue is like a, a it's like a, a small. It's page a page, and, page and, and a half. half. Yeah, he wasn't kidding. <laughs> it's tiny. But it, you, it, 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 as you read through it, you'll well, as you don't read through it, I guess. <laughs> I'm trying. It will continue to pull back into the story. 
Nice. Well, All okay. Right. It's ten minutes after the hour. It is. We have been going on and on. So we're going to take another break. This one's going to be a little bit longer, and then we'll return, and we'll talk some more.
Decided to bite the dust. Can you hear me? I can hear me. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Good. All right, we're back, and I'm not gonna listen to those earphones. So, oh, as you can yeah. tell, we've been listening to a, a, a variety of different 8-bit uh, video games from days past of Sega and Nintendo, all mashed together into their own little uh, songs. Hooray, awesome. chip art. <laughs> and the nice thing is, they're all free and available out on the net. Hooray, free, free. and Creative Commons. So it means we can play it on the air. Awesome. <laughs> That's the best part. I mean, we were, previous where we were before we could play music. So we could play anything we wanted because there was music licensing, which was awesome. And then to come, you know, we don't have that anymore. Of course, we're an hour shorter, but pretty much we're the same amount of time. Yeah. So. And Stormy is doing his job diligently, wandering around. So, oh wait, I should probably play that, huh? Um, we're going to play a sponsor drop for Epic Puzzles and Games. We'll be back. Dungeon Crawlers Radio is sponsored by Epic Puzzles and Games. Now with two great locations in Lehigh and West Valley City. Serving both the Salt Lake and Utah County. Your one-stop shop for all your geek and gaming needs. Uh, everything's under control. Situation normal. You're listening to Dungeon Crawler Radio with Revan and a guy named Joe. Oh, yeah! Well, yeah, that one's older. Oh, okay. So, what was that? I was just asking, is Brandon Sanderson a sponsor of this? I just noticed he's come here for a couple of game nights. Um, well, basically, Brandon's a, f- a friend of mine. Um, and so, my boss and... A friend that I've got known since high school actually is a partial owner here, and so and Brandon loves magic, so sure. we've got him coming out to these events like crazy. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's why he's always here. I'm sure it has nothing to do with all the. Uh, I don't know if they give him free magic cards. I would assume they would. Hey, show up and we'll give you free magic cards. Awesome. <laughs> Wouldn't you show up? Yeah, well, I'm, yeah, yeah seriously. Well, and the kind of business he brings in, I'm yeah. sure, heavily well, outweighs the free magic type. Yeah, <laughs> it definitely has quite a few people that follow him and nothing like us. I mean, we get a little bit of... Yeah, that was like the biggest fan service we had when he was doing his... Like, there yeah, was, there was like there's a just people lined people up. Here. Yeah, it's, kind of hey, cool. it's been off and on. We've got some people where there's a lot, and other people, so there's not too many. I mean, like last week we had Tracy Hickman, and everyone's like too afraid to come here. I mean, they're standing way back, and they're like, "That's Tracy Hickman," and then <laughs> run out the door. <laughs> I think that I think yeah. that is. Oh my gosh! It's like really just come over and say I forgot. We're in the uh, same room. It's kind of funny. Yeah. Should get a neon sign that says "Come here, come here." Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking the we should do that. Maybe a bowl full of candy. <laughs> yeah, we, we've been getting we've been getting crap about not bringing food. Oh, I have the solution for you. Yeah, oh. I just found this on the internet a couple weeks ago. A twenty-six pound gummy bear, no. ten thousand wow. calories. <laughs> that wouldn't work. It only costs one hundred and fifty dollars. That wouldn't work. <laughs> only. I told everyone that's I, what I, I want when I finally my graduate. Birthday, my birthday, I get a five-pound bag of gummy bears every year. They don't even last a day. Yeah, I understand. I Gummy like bears and cheese balls. <laughs> yep, those are my favorite. And cheesecake. All right, I think I know what to get you next year for, uh, or uh, what to get for your birthday this year. Gummy bears. Uh, There's going to be something else. Wait, was that for me or for? <laughs> for oh, okay. We're not we're not close enough friends yet. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're, you're on the buddy scale now, but. Uh, but you did drive all no the way out to Tula yet. quite a bit when we last game. Oh yeah. Way back then, when back back when I was playing Ed. Yeah, when I made. All of my uh, all of my uh, game 
gamers, whatever, I don't know what we're going to call you. All of your game group? In my whole game group, drive all the way out. And by, and by making uh, your whole game group, you <laughs> pretty much, he was driving and everyone else was in the car with him. everybody up there, and no one would shell out for gas. Yeah, uh, I know, that sucked. Yeah. Throw them in your pickup. <laughs> and, and it was great. Uh, the Like, the last day we played, I had bought a new car, and we got out to the, uh, we got out to I-80, and my uh, transmission failed on me. Oh goodness! And it was like it was like ten o'clock at night. Yeah, <laughs> that that. Uh, <laughs> wow, <laughs> the joys of gaming. Yes. So, yeah. since you have no gaming experience, really? Oh well, no, card gaming. I have card plenty games. of other PC gaming experience. PC gaming experience, <laughs> but no role playing. Yeah, nothing like that. You're in. You've you've jumped into the world of the fantasy novel. Mm-hmm. Is there any possibility of a game coming out of this? I would love it. Okay. I would love it. A role-playing game, some sort of board game. Sure. Definitely, I'm sure you want a movie. Movies are always awesome. Well, it's kind of a double-edged sword. Yeah. I'm trying to promote how much better books are than movies, and I'm like, wouldn't it be awesome if it was a movie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. That is, that who is tough. You, who would you want? To play your 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 main, your, character? your main characters. Uh, I don't know actors or actresses' names very well. Good. I do know who I would want to write the composition of the soundtrack. Ah. <laughs> and who would that be? Harry Gregson Williams. Okay. Uh, he is. Um, I mean, he wrote the soundtracks for uh, the Chronicles of Narnia. Yeah. He wrote it for Prince of Persia. He actually even Great wrote movie. it for um, a video game. Um, now I can't think of it is. Maybe it was Medal of no, not Medal of Honor. Maybe it was. Is there a Medal of Honor four? Call of Duty four? No. 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 That really, I, I well, maybe know. it was Call of Duty. Well, I don't I, know. I'm not a first person. <sighs> first person, so I can't tell you. I'm sure my friend Travis right now is like stupid, stupid. But anyway, yes. Um, every soundtrack he's written has been phenomenal, minus minus phone booth, but. Very unique well, to that movie. movie. Well, the I haven't seen the movie, but the soundtrack is one of those kind of scary movie soundtracks yeah. where it just has weird noises going on, not a lot of movements uh, and orchestration. Gotcha. So, okay. yeah, it's not much fun to listen to by itself. No. But everything else, fantastic. He is a phenomenal and Hans Zimmer's Apprentice. Everyone knows yes. him. <laughs> well, this is generally where we jump into the Gamer Forge. So. What that is, and this this, you, this will help kind of tie into you a little bit too. Basically, we're kind of talking about and explaining how to write or craft a story that will work for their game. And so you may have a little bit of knowledge in this. So uh, which one should we do? Which one do you want to uh, jump into? I think the dead, the undead one will be a uh, the undead one. The undead one. That 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 would be a interesting. Okay. Interesting way to interesting thing to write because so, really I'm having trouble coming up with a game session that involves the undead. I've been watching movies like Resident Evil, Shaun of the Dead, Zombieland, and a few others to get some ideas, but every time I write it, it seems to fall flat. Can you guys help me out. My group has been uh, commissioned by the local church leaders to eradicate the inf infestation of undead creatures that have suddenly appeared in a cathedral that is located up a small vale in the mountains. Most of the inhabitants there were wiped out. How do I make this game fun without constantly throwing zombies and skeletons at them? So, uh, if you want to make it fun and fun undead, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is uh, look at the Evil Dead series. Okay, they're yeah, they're throwing they're they're throwing zombies, they're throwing skeletons, but there's a there, there's there's another else uh, element to it that that not a lot of people look at the undead, and that's that's the spiritual side. So look at look at you know kind of ghosts. And paranormal activities. You're gonna you want to set it, make it atmospheric, and you can set the atmosphere however you want. Mm -hmm. So you know you can either make it you know a really spooky atmosphere, or you can make it kind of a little bit light and lighthearted. Well, I think the best thing is the story. Yes, the story is going to really dictate the movement of the the undead aspect because really zombies and skeletons aren't really exciting. No, they're not. They're not. Um, so you got to bring into the story the element of fear. Uh, you need to bring it up to make it kind of creepy. Mm -hmm. And that's going to make it fun because, you know, when they're on edge, even if it's like a half, a, a zombie cut in half that suddenly starts crawling across the floor at you, it's going to be freaky. It's going to bring some, some surprise and, 
yeah. and fun to the game. So it doesn't have to be just an onslaught of undead just coming at you. And just um, uh, another thing that actually just kind of popped into my head, they're not quite undead, uh, but I've been playing this uh, during my uh, up, up late nights, getting ready for my overnights, mm-hmm. but uh, Half-Life 2, Half-Life, and the uh, Ravenholm's uh, uh, level. Okay. The you're you know they're not quite zombies, but you know if you've played it, they're you know the they're people that have been uh, taken over by the head crabs. Okay. And they kind of act like zombies. And what made that makes that area fun and entertaining is you can make you can use the environment as a weapon. Mm-hmm. So instead of instead of just you know you're just blasting them away with your shotgun or whatever uh, whatever uh, things you have. You can set up, like, there's trap setups, and there's things you can use in your environment that can help you uh, achieve the, uh, the the cool slaughter that you're looking for. Mm-hmm. Well, you mentioned Half-Life 2. I was thinking, oh, yeah, okay. gravity gun? <laughs> <laughs> Throw a urinal at their head. <laughs> oh, that would also be fun. <laughs> I also had the idea as you were reading that storyline. Uh, it so- actually sounded very familiar to the Diablo games. Yeah. Uh, that's some- so, I mean, if he's wanting to... Or she, this person, is wanting to write something similar to that game. Actually, right, going on the same path, but and that's actually where I might even argue with you a little about whether zombies or skeletons could be exciting, because Diablo holds a massive following. Yeah, well, <laughs> it really depends on how it's, you know, played. I guess. Yeah, you, know, you can run into a game where it's just pretty much zombie after zombie after zombie after zombie yeah. after zombie. And that, that gets boring. That's true. Um, but, again, the story of how you're telling that, how they're coming up against these creatures, uh, a really good book that was written, The Canticle by R.A. Salvatore. Oh, yeah. Uh, that involves some undead creatures in a really great and fun way. Um, you know, Diablo does a, a great job of that, but... It isn't just zombies. It doesn't, it's not just zombies, so there are other creatures, you know. There Very could true. be, uh, you know, there could be some sort of demonic creatures there. Like he, uh, Flagoon said, there could be ghosts or other paranormal creatures that are involved somehow uh, that are creating this, this environment. Um, who knows, maybe there could be a, a gate to one to the abyss or whatever, or whatever we call those planes now in 4th edition. Um so there's many ways to be able to create it. I think the biggest thing you need to do is, of course, uh, there needs to be some explanation as to as you're going through the story. So have a good reason for them to be there, not yeah, just a good reason. You, you, you. Well, he actually, he actually kind of already did, kind of described what they're, you yeah. know, what they're, why they're going out there. They've been yeah. hired by this town or by these people. You're right, but what's caused church. it? What's caused this infestation? Yeah. So, so we got to work up to that. So, uh, so a good point is, you know, you know, make it a good story. Yes. Make it, uh, you know, a good story. And yes. not just a good story, but something unique, especially with a, a game like that, if they're going for yeah, intensity and, and surprise. Yeah, you know, Throw something in there different, and people will be like, ah! Yeah. And, <laughs> and that, if it's like, oh, yes, I know what's going to happen here. Yeah, and that's really <laughs> where the story crafting comes into play, is if it's something unique of why this happened, you know, they're going to be talking about this for years to come so you know, so absolutely. kind of sounds to me avoid the the stereotypical evil, the, the, the evil cult decided that they wanted to open a door to uh, let their god in and it went horribly wrong and it uh, killed everybody yeah <laughs> Make it kind of an entertaining thing like you know, i would just say avoid you know the uh, fda avoid wizard or uh, a, a necromancer a necromancer uh, avoid uh gateway Clerk opening. of the death yeah you know, you know, if it was modern day, I'd say, you know, uh, some lab was creating some new form of Prozac and they screwed up and <laughs> what, melts their brain and they've now zombified. You know, yeah. Something <laughs> believable. Well, that, that, one but, actually sounds, that one actually sounds more <laughs> believable and fun. <laughs> but, uh, you know, just out of the ordinary. You know, and then you go through the whole process of discovering it. So, yeah, that's the part of the story is that they're going there to eradicate this, but at the same time, Leave puzzles that you can find, kind of find out what what's going on, why this happened, to find out so that it doesn't continue. And and don't just don't just flat out hold their hand yeah. and no, tell no. them exactly why. No, if they're going leave after breadcrumbs, well, leave oh, breadcrumbs, yeah. and not only that, they're going after undead. If they die, they get bit. 
they're undead. Yeah. <laughs> that, and maybe that yeah. could be part of your story. Yeah. <laughs> what do you actually, do? That actually happened in a few of our campaigns. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah uh, that that happens. Yeah. You know, there is consequences. You've decided to go after these creatures. Well, they can't be killed very easily. Something's going to happen. Yeah. So, any other things? I think. I, you know, you've they've, he's looked at some great material. Yeah. For some ideas. Uh, I would maybe expand that a little bit to maybe like the TV series Supernatural. Um, okay. Because that gives yeah, you actually, some that actually really good ideas. Got some really good ideas. You know, and not only that, it, it's it takes like mo- you know, the the fairy tales and all those freaky horror stories that we've heard as child children growing up, and made it believable in in a modern day setting. So okay. kind of, you can kind of take that and some of those examples and kind of incorporate it in your own. Little game. All right, I'm having trouble here writing down our experience. Okay, so what do we got? got? I got the good story, make it unique, make it entertaining. Uh Uh, What else? What else did we put in there? Um, (laughs) Avoid cliches. Well, that's the same as make it unique, I guess. Well, no, you can still make a good unique story, but still have tons of cliches in there. Yeah, so I think avoid cliches. Yeah, go around a corner. You know, honestly, I think the scariest thing is what you were saying about your house at Halloween. You go around a corner and there's nothing there. Yeah, uh, that's even scarier the than only, something jumping out at you. you know, the, the, the biggest thing that's going to scare these people the most is going to be themselves. Yeah, yeah. think of think Play of uh, think of the uh, of the Silent Hill series, or at least the the first two Silent Hill games. You spend most of your time walking around expecting to see a monster around yeah. the corner. Well, expecting yeah, to, and expecting do that. To have something bad happen. Yeah, and that's. Uh, that's a really good thing, you know. Um, make it so that the expected is unexpected, or vice versa. Or vice versa, <laughs> yeah. Because I mean, that's one of the things that made uh, Hitchcock so big in his day. Is you know, most of the death scenes and stuff like that you didn't see. Yeah, and it's still today. It's scary. I mean, one of the scariest movies that I've ever seen. I mean, I've seen tons and tons of horror movies to the point where I'm just like, all right, this is boring. But um, Darkness Falls. Yeah. None of the deaths happened on camera. Everything happened off screen in the dark, and you heard noises and screams. That, but you didn't actually see the You didn't the see gore. anything. I couldn't sleep in the dark for a week. <laughs> but the Changeling did the same thing. Yeah. Back to what? Uh, um, I'm sorry. Lagoon. 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 I kept wanting to say Snoom, but that's a character in my oh, book. Hey, we got a call. <laughs> oh, hey. Sorry. It's been sitting there for a while. Um, let's answer it. You can answer it. Oh. Well, thank you for calling Dungeon Crawlers Radio. This is the great and mighty powerful Black Moon. How are you? In the dark for a week. <laughs> the changeling did the same thing. You may have to turn to down. Sorry. in the Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello, welcome. <laughs> Um, Hi. Sorry. I was waiting for you guys. I was listening to you in the background, waiting for when you were going to pick up, and then I was going to hurry and push mute. So. Ah, no problem. Well, welcome to the show. And uh, Taryn is. I recognize his his voice. His head. He recognizes I just got a, I just got a text from this person. Uh, you haven't mentioned yeah. me yet. This is my sister. This is your sister. <laughs> it Angela. is his sister. The lovely sister is is calling you now. Yes. So she's one of my biggest fans. <laughs> well, there is nothing wrong with that. It's always great when you have a sibling that's your biggest fan. Now, is, are you an older or younger sibling? I am an older sister. Okay. Um, by what? Four years. Four years. Yeah. <clears throat> so I actually the reason I was calling is because um, obviously I want to plug Taryn's book. I mean, I want to be a huge support and. Yes. His family has been very supportive of him, but and I want to mention. I'm sorry. And involved. And involved. Yes. Yes. Yeah. In fact, who thought of all the hard names when you couldn't think of the words for some of the names of your stuff, Ter? Just yes, kidding. <laughs> Sacrosanct. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to mention that I am not a fantasy fan. In fact, Taryn had to convince me quite furiously <laughs> that I needed to read his book because I kind of pride myself on finding typos and and on billboards or flyers and things and so he's like just read it to edit it and and I ashamedly admit that I had to be drug kicking and screaming to do it I'm not okay. and I'm probably going to get lynched on this show for saying that <laughs> thing but anyway I read it and I was hooked 
So this isn't just a book for people that are huge fans of fantasy. It's it's a book that um, it has soul, if that makes any sense. It speaks to someone individually, and it makes them self-reflect at the same time as they're getting pure entertainment from all the characters and the adventures and um, the circumstances that they find themselves in. So in case anyone is listening that thinks, eh, fantasy, I am here to plug it from someone who is not intrigued by the fantasy world whatsoever. Why is she not your publicist? <laughs> she is. <laughs> oh, she is. <laughs> I do my own yeah. little publicizing. Is that even a word? <laughs> yes, absolutely. It's a, it's a lifestyle. Yes. So uh, what type of books do you generally read? Um, anything but fantasy. <laughs> anything but I really fantasy. like, um, I enjoy true stories. Any kind. In fact, okay. the last year I've been very mesmerized with the whole 1995 Mount Everest disaster that happened. And I think I've read at least nine or ten of the novels by the people that were on the mountain. Um, I like um, I like thrillers. I like crime novels. Um, I like mysteries. When I was young, Nancy Drew was my favorite person, and I've just matured into other authors now mm-hmm. since then. Um Pretty much anything except fantasy, which is why you can see why he had to drag me kicking and screaming into reading his book. <clears throat> I'm impressed. And not just because she hasn't read fantasy, but yeah. she had a bad taste in her mouth. <laughs> Uh-oh. Yeah, it's like seafood. I dislike oh. seafood, and not oh. because I haven't tried. In fact, sometimes it even sounds good, and then I'll get it and be like, oh, it's not hey, the same I'm thing not as alone in the world. <laughs> you don't, you I don't have like tried seafood either? fantasy on. I've tried it so many me. times, and I just... I just can't. I'm, I get bored. I know that sounds crazy, but I get bored. And so I was enthralled. I read his um, novel, editing it, for I think I got it done in three days. Like I was just reading all day long, all night long. I loved it. Wow. That's saying a lot, actually. I'm tight. speechless. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, and I, it might sound a little bit like there's nepotism involved because I'm a sister, but I promise. I mean, we are a very open and honest family and we say things how they are and I was like I'm not going to read your fantasy <laughs> we're, we're um, brutally honest to each other well, <laughs> we are brutally honest with you, and our lives are open books and so well just putting aside the fact that you know you are his sister um, the fact that you don't like fantasy books and you're speaking up so highly of this book says a lot honestly um because I know tons of people out there that don't like fantasy books, and they, yeah, you can't even get them to read something. And even if they do, they'll read like a chapter and like, yeah, this sucks, and toss it off to the side. So I, I don't know anyone that's not liked it, read a book, and like really, you know, if you don't like Harry Potter, yeah, you know, they don't like Harry Potter, and that's it. They're not even going to attempt to read any of the later books, or let alone speak highly of it. So. That's, yeah. that's amazing. Well, and I think a lot of it has to do with that. Earlier in the show, you guys were talking about how his, how Apernesia is set in a world that's more Western and not a lot of um, elves and dwarves and not dragons. A lot of, no, not a lot of I feel dwarves. like I can there read are... it and I can believe it. Like, it's yeah. a believable thing. Even the magic. Even the magic. It's... Um, you can draw all kinds of spiritual similes with the magic and... Um, and it's just, it's a book that I read and I was like, I can believe this. This makes sense to me. It doesn't, I don't read it and go, I just don't roll my eyes at it. <laughs> well, not, not, I mean, you, you reference the spiritual connections to the, to the magic. Uh, <clears throat> I wouldn't deny that at all, but I've also had, um, especially with younger kids that are more open with things yeah. that should normally embarrass people our age. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they've told me before they've sat there and, you know, read a part where a guy creates a fireball in his hands, but I, I don't just say he created a fireball, which 99% yeah. of the world just accepts. I explain how he did it. Yeah. They said they just kind of step back and put their hands together and, oh, I thought I could do it. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> the faith of a child, right? <laughs> yeah. So that, that kind of approach. I'll, I'll probably be the one of those people who tries to do it when I get to that part of the book. <laughs> I know you can. I know you yeah. can. Yeah. <laughs> Focus your chi. Believe. Yeah. Believe. Come on, Goku oh, can do it. Man. Apparently you can do it in this book, so why not? <laughs> wow. So, yeah. 
So, is there anything like well? Now that we have your sister on the line, uh oh, <laughs> is there any like open dirty mind. secret? No, no, just kidding. <laughs> she could probably <laughs> say a lot of dirt on you. Yeah, yeah, we won't. <laughs> we know, we know. <laughs> Luckily, I didn't try to think of anything before, and so I don't have oh. anything right off the top of my head that I can. Good. I'm here to do nothing but praise him and Whoa. say that he likes duct, duct tape. <laughs> There is well, nothing wrong like with that. <laughs> I'm, like, yeah. I'm, I'm from Alaska, which is the duct tape ca duct tape capital of the world. They actually nice. buy more duct nice. tape per capita than anywhere else in. That's just because of red greens influence up there in yeah. Canada. Yeah, yeah. caulking yeah. doesn't work in there's those there kind of cold environments. Yeah, that was, able to, uh, that was able to fix his airplane that got attacked by a bear with a, with duct tape. Of course. Nice. <laughs> Hey, and you know what? In the same light of as long as I'm on the show, I yeah. missed the first 20 minutes of the interview, so I apologize if I'm repeating anything. But right. I have got to praise Taryn's family, his immediate family, his wife and his four children for the support that they have given him. It's been phenomenal. I don't think I would have lasted. They have been, they have sacrificed and supported him, um, and it's been amazing. I'm so proud of the support that his family's given him. And it's also good she said that because I hadn't said that yet. And yes. so thank you. <laughs> I <laughs> just saved you from sleeping on the couch tonight. Yeah, <laughs> so by the way, tomorrow is Valentine's Day. Yeah. 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 <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Since you are driving home, you might as well grab something. <laughs> Pick up a rose at the gas station. Just kidding. Yeah. yeah they they have it's it's unbelievable the sacrifices they have made to support him um and i did tell hear taryn talking about his schedule with school and working and everything yeah. but um and he has been a great father he, they have not been neglected in any way but they've definitely been willing to sacrifice and say you go do this because this is what you need to do with a wife and four kids at home four kids under the age of seven i might add that, yeah, um say that and all boys so so anyway they've been they've been really really supportive and a, and I'm pulling out a, a picture of my oldest son in his Halloween costume. That's you can just awesome. look at that and see why he is my biggest fan. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> Wolverine in the flesh. Seven-year-old. Yeah. Six-year-old Wolverine. <laughs> well, that's, that's really amazing. Very supportive. So that's, that's great that your wife's supporting and, and your kids are, and it sounds like the rest of your family is all behind you. It, you, you yeah. You can't we leave. all sport the beholders vinyls on our back windows. You'll see us when we're driving through the valley. Yeah, that, that's how I, I actually uh, got in contact, got in contact with, you. with you. I, I oh, on my nice. way here, on my way here, I saw someone driving in a minivan with a with that on the back. So I don't know. Oh yeah, that, there's a hundred. I'm not even sure who it belongs. It. Yeah, <laughs> it was, it was I was gonna say if you said a Honda Civic, I could tell you who it was, but. <laughs> I like my Honda Civic. <laughs> nice little car. But, uh, yeah, so that's how I saw it, and I'm like, hey, let's go. So, yeah. yeah. And another good. thing I thought of, too, I hope that I'm not, like, totally yeah. manipulating all the time that you guys had. Um, I don't know if Terrence talked about yet the significance of the characters in his book and the names that they've been given. But I actually no, did yeah. have a real question, a genuine question for him that I've never asked him before. So a lot of the characters in the book are named after people that are important to him and maybe some people that aren't so important to him. Um, <laughs> but one question I had, Tara, for you is, are any of the characters that you've written about, are they inspired by anyone? You know what I mean? Like their heroic actions or their um, mindsets or the love stories or anything, is any of that inspired by it? By anyone personally? Well, I, th I think any any amount of writing that you do is coming from personal experience and people you may have known. But there is only one character in the whole book that is actually patterned after someone that I know, and I'm not going to say who it was because this person wasn't very nice. <laughs> oh, so that's so that's the one that I do know. So no yeah. one else is patterned after anyone else. Actually, there there is one other person that it was a friend I had that made me really really mad. And I was at a certain scene in the book that, um, to relieve my anger, I created them and killed them in the same paragraph just to get it over with. So they didn't have okay. a chance to manifest One themselves. <laughs> wow. wow. That person was a so, really good So none of the head. love stories or, or the circumstances or any of the adventures are patterned after anything that's happened in your real life before? Um, not, not entirely. 
but okay. good piece coming. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm kind of speechless. speechless here because she's asking better questions than we ask. Yeah, take your note. <laughs> yeah. Are you guys hiring? Are you guys single? Uh, just, oh, wait, you were just all talking about your babies. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my, my, my sister is on the prowl. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't call it the prowl. Well, maybe a little the prowl. I, I, I've been there. Yeah. Mary got <laughs> in the force thing. That was not fun. So everyone, I don't know if you've been there, but yeah. No. I have. Just, I have been there. <laughs> yeah, not fun. But uh, yeah. wow, I'm. You're just. You, you, not only is she a great promoter of you, she's <laughs> asking amazing questions. Well, yeah, but she's not into the fantasy thing. Not normally. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And no. she's still asking uh-huh. amazing questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What about science? Well, science sometimes fiction, as, 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 when you're supporting them, you get caught more up in the logistics of it all, yeah. and so and so I had just thought just thought of that question. Well, no, that randomly. was a really good question, and there's we've we've asked that in the past with a few of our authors, and you'd be surprised with how many say, "Yep, it was this person in my life," and generally most of them pick villains. You know, it's someone that's really picked on them or hurt them in some way, and it's like I'm getting back with you. Forever in literature. <laughs> so oh, that, that totally makes nice sense. Tell, yeah, right? it's, it's, like, the ag- it's the passive, it's the passive aggressive way of inflicting right. revenge. Yeah, yeah exactly. um, what was it was uh, Chaucer in in yeah. Night's Tale, yeah. where you know I will eviscerate you and yeah, yeah. immortalize and then, yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it. So, and that's what kind of the pattern I've seen. You rarely see anyone like a unless it's like a really dear family member and they kind of molded after that person, but. Generally, they don't. Which it's funny. Hey, Sarah, do you what, do you want to talk at all about who you've dedicated the book to? Ah, yes, but let me finish this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was going to say it was funny because the the day I I created and killed this old friend of mine was the same day I got on Facebook and said, mm-hmm. "Beware, lest you anger me. <laughs> I will defame your name <laughs> eternally." <laughs> Yay! Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, no. Um, the the book itself, even the main character Lon, is actually um, all dedicated to my brother who passed away when I was in ninth grade. Okay. So yeah, that that's that's a a touching thing. That's always a good thing. Yeah. So, the, but even that, there's things Lon does that my brother would never have done. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, there's there's you never know. <laughs> Had he yeah. put. He, Continued on. He would probably be a wilder of true sight if he were still alive yeah. today. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, I could I, see him being a raider. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe so. <laughs> so, back to your sister's question. So, it's, I don't have to ask it now. Or did you forget it? About who I dedicated it to? No, didn't she ask another question after that? Was there another one? No, I don't think so. I think that was the last one. Okay. Never mind. You're hearing those voices in your head again. Yes, I, I have voices in my head quite often. They speak in different languages and sometimes with accents. That's always fun. Russian, Scottish, Indian. You know, now that I've been thinking... It's Hindu, isn't it? Not Indian. Yeah. Now that I've been thinking more and more about it, I actually think if there's another person that closest resembled a person I know mm-hmm. in my real life, it would probably be my other sister, Melanie, uh, whose name was Malai in my book. And oh, so okay. I... <laughs> I probably should totally. Probably I can totally like, see that. Yeah, because there's a lot of people that don't like Malai in my book because she's she's kind of the 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 bitter, angry woman that hates men, and she's out to the world is out to get her, and she she bites right back kind of personality. I can see tons of women. She's a Virgo. Like she's blunt. Yeah. <laughs> now liking this book, but we love her. Character. Everyone can relate I to that. I think she's been even. I think she's been more supported supportive of you than I have, Tara. So we got to say one yeah. good thing about her. Well, well, and again, because she comes from a, a loving background of yeah. fantasy, she is the Harry Potter fan, the, the oh. Twilight fan. <laughs> well, see, it's really nice. You have that counterbalance. You got the one that really likes that. They, and that supports you, and then you have the one that doesn't like fantasy that's still supporting you. So, yeah, sure. Wow, you have an amazing family. Thank you. Yeah. Besides, you're immediate, you're extended too. So, I mean, that's just that's great. Well, and not and just supporting that side. You. my my wife's side of the family has also been an amazing support. When I was getting ready to release it, I sent out about twenty copies of my novel mm-hmm. to manuscript to everyone, and 
everything came back just with fantastic insights. And, it, and his this extended is, family, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wasn't but, that Cedar hey, City thing all arranged by your cousin, Taryn? My cousins, yeah. Hmm. So, wow. Very supportive. So it's what is the family house. reunion like at your your with your oh, family now? About a hundred people. Wow. <laughs> on, and we're talking hundred on dad's side and a hundred on mom's side too. Yeah. And we Six could name all of our cousins right, and we've well, cousins. So. <laughs> Big <yeah>. parties. <laughs> so you have this family reunion and yeah, Taryn's book's coming out next month and it's actually funny, at my last reunion on the James side they uh I actually sat down at a table and did a book signing for my family reunion. Wow! For the the entire, about actually about an hour. Wow! <laughs> so, yeah. They all bought your book. Yep. That's pretty. That's pretty cool. <laughs> well, start. and we not have only about- have they bought it, but they've read it several times. Like people love it. In fact, Taryn just got a review a couple of days ago. His son, the the guy's son, who's I think a sophomore in high school said that he loved it more than Lord of the Rings. Is that true, Taryn? Am I remembering right? Mm, more well, he just said it's his... He is a big fantasy reader. He said it's his new most favorite book, so I guess it's more than... No, 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 no. <laughs> on It was on Facebook, and it was on the thing where... He, it was on my um, wall. It was Kent Shelton, and he said his... Maybe you didn't even oh, see it. Oh, that's true. It, that, I think it I was, heard about that. I didn't... It, yeah. Yeah, it was one of the comments on one of my posts, and he said, my, my son loves it more than Lord of the Rings. So I thought that was a pretty good compliment. Hmm. All right. I'm not stepping on Tolkien's <laughs> Or blasphemy. Maybe <laughs> blasphemy. All I can say is that's probably because it's a lot easier to read. And there's not yeah, and detail. they don't have chapters about a tree. <laughs> yeah, about a tree or a character that will never show up throughout the entire series. Yeah, with- Obnoxious poetry yeah. from Bobadil. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, wow. I think we're going to have to cut you we off. We have five minutes left. Oh, that's fine. I'll go away now. Oh, you, well, thank you for calling in and adding thank more you to the for show letting and me. asking questions. You're, so, um, is there anything else that you want to uh, say about? Karen, before you take off, um, uh, may, nope. maybe one more plug for the to the to the fans of okay. Insights that are still cursing my name for putting off the release of book two. Uh, there will be some massive edits that will go into Not book one before it's re-released. So be excited for the re-release of book one. <laughs> Look at this! I'm already finding a way to get them to buy the book again, <laughs> and it will come with a new cover and Ooh. maybe some new illustrations. Nice. And, yeah, new insight. Aha, chuckle. All right. Well, and your sister, it's Angela or Angela? Angela. Angela. Yes. All right. Well, we're going to let you go. Thanks for calling That's in. That's fine. Appreciate you're welcome. It. And if you have All any right. comments, uh, you're welcome to email them into us. And then uh, if there's any information that we can post up for, for, your, for Taryn, we'd be happy to put it up on the website and our Facebook page. And that. That's so. great. Thank you for letting me plug my little brother. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> All right. Have a good night. I was waiting for that. That whole little point where she said little brother. That was just worth it. Uh, right there. Uh, well, and interesting enough, her name in my book was Alegna, who is Malai's grandmother. So oh. kind of the motherly role. <laughs> nice. All right. <laughs> so, and also she's a whore. <laughs> Another character was named after as well. So I think I signed her book like, Thank you, you grandmotherly whore, or something like that. <laughs> call your sister a whore? Yeah, and she's probably laughing as well. <laughs> Get her off the line before I say that. <laughs> I don't know how to respond to that. Yeah. <laughs> Grandmother, grandmotherly loving whore. Grandmotherly loving. <laughs> I don't know if I could have heard that and not laugh while she was on there. Not that I think that of her, but that's just... Why would you do that to your sister? Yeah. <laughs> like I said, open book. Yeah. <laughs> all, right. all right. Well, I got some more. Uh, I got some more. Uh... Okay, so let's hit all those before we have to take off because we have two minutes. All right. First one is a uh, good story. Make it unique. Don't yes. go for don't go for the cheap stuff. Avoid cliches. And then uh, pacing. The expect uh, the expected and unexpected. Take your time. Just just enjoy the revel. Uh, just just revel in their uh, in their in. in the intensity. Yes. And then the last one, the unknown is your friend. Yes. You don't want to just, you know, throw a, a mob of zombies on them. 
t- t- tickle it to them. Just, just you know, you you run into one little one, and then your big zombie, uh, your big zombie horde is gonna be, you know, your your climax. Or it could be just like, you know, uh, the uh, the mid boss or something like that. Oh yeah, it could you, be the mid boss. You, you don't want to throw too much at them. Yes. You want it to be. If you're in the catacombs, crawling around in the dark. You want to play on those fears of the Precisely. darkness of when when are we going to run into this? What's around this corner? Yeah, what's around, around the corner? corner. And then you that. turn the corner, you know, and there's, this, uh, and there's maybe there's this really creepy noise coming around. And you turn around the corner, and then there's nothing. nothing. Exactly there's what I said. <laughs> Do what you yeah, can absence can be the, the most tension. powerful yeah. ally because <laughs> yeah. this is going to be this is going to be a horror. You want it. You want to build that tension, and but you don't want to keep, play it too long. Yes. you know. Yeah. you know maybe. They turn the next corner and there's a body part, you know, and a blood trail. You know, this is something that there's still bread, breadcrumbs that are bringing yeah, them the along. Yeah, bread, the breadcrumbs are your friend here. Yeah. You don't want to give them too much. Let the player's imagination play the plague their own fears. All right. They're going to scare themselves more than you will. So, I want to, uh, you know, well, thank your sister for yeah. calling in, making it more interesting. Yeah. Uh, and is it, you want to plug... Anything else? I mean, unfortunately, most people can't buy your book now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> At least, yeah. Well, if you really want to push that, and I guess wait, wait to find out for sure if this contract goes through yeah. with the publishing house, and then raid them with emails if you really want to pressure them to get it out faster. Okay. Well, keep checking <laughs> back at Taryn's website, which is? TarynJames.com. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, we have 30 seconds. Yes, we do. Uh, next week, Unicorn City. Yeah, uh, we'll be in and possibly Carter Reed. I uh, haven't heard back from, him, but hopefully maybe we do. Uh, author of the Zombie Nation. All kind of right, tie in. And then we talked about zombies. Check out Terrence's website. Find out when his book's coming out. Read it. Enjoy, and say hi. We'll be back next week. We'll miss you. Yay! We don't get the cool. Bye, Oh, okay. Have fun storming the castle. Think it'll work? It would take a miracle. Bye-bye. Bye.